I'm going to try and roll through this video as quickly as possible, but this video is not meant as either of the two following things. This is not meant as a backpedal to retract previous opinions or statements, nor is it meant as a call-out video like, everyone who disagrees with me sucks, I'm right, boo-hoo, shut up, leave, uh, you know, a bunch of names, expletives here. It's, it's really neither of the two. I thought it was important to follow up my previous Evil Dead the Game video, as I got some criticism on it, and some of it was actually extremely warranted. I like to think I'm not too big of a, of a person ego-wise, uh, because I'm really not, to admit if I miss something or make a mistake or anything like that, so I thought that it was important to kind of circle back to this topic. And a great example of this warranted criticism was that I failed to mention a lot of my thoughts on balancing for this game that would actually help the survivor's side of it. I think a lot of my focus was sort of on the demon, uh, and some of those balance issues I will get into here in this video to sort of prove that I'm not just some asshole demon main uh, posting from Reddit, you know, anonymously who's mad, uh, who doesn't play Survivor and just wants to win every match, as that couldn't be further from the truth. I also think it's fair to mention that some of the footage I used from my last video was early gameplay playing the game, sort of getting more used to it. It was wins, but it was getting more used to characters, and there were times I didn't play perfectly. Now, the internet will always point that out, and I don't think you should really have to play perfectly with a video game uh, in order to have any sort of opinion on it, but some people do think you do. So that's worth mentioning. When it comes to videos like this, I'm sadly up against a time limit for YouTube. When I upload videos over 20 minutes long, for every additional minute, I see a severe drop off both in viewers being willing to even watch the video and in viewers who do watch it being willing to actually stick the video out. The same goes for that video, actually. Many people only watched a total of about 6 minutes and 12 seconds of that video before leaving the video, with only 12% of the entire video's viewership watching to the end. This, by the way, is actually why many other content creators uh, just don't take community feedback as valuable or take it seriously. They just, they don't care what you think. Uh, they can see exactly how long you watched their video, and at what point you and the rest of the audience started to just stop listening and form an opinion or response and leave. Uh, it would be similar to me reviewing Doctor Strange, but admitting a little bit into the review that I left 20 minutes into the movie. Nobody would actually take my criticism of that movie seriously. I do want to mention that with this video, despite some of the outcry, it did have around 90-ish percent likes from the viewers that watched it. That was last night, because whenever I do mention this, a lot of people bum rush these things to try and dislike them, uh, to drive up that statistic, because the internet thinks ratioing you is an own, uh, even though no one can see it anymore, really, uh, because of YouTube's own lack of transparency, which I also disagree with. Uh, but it's worth mentioning that generally that video was agreed with. I don't have incentive to go back and talk about it again, other than trying to be genuine, okay? That's the point I'm trying to drive home, and respond to some valid points and points that I think aren't valid, you know, on, on the side of responses with my own replies. However, I will not be addressing the people in this video who went out of their way to just try and pick a fight or name call and attack others in the comments, or the people with the very arrogant attitude of just, if you have a criticism of the game, you must be terrible because it's a perfect project. Uh, even I really, you know, I still have anger issues, I will fully admit, and I used to be someone who was very, very quick to go there with name calling and kind of insults and stuff like that and think that's how you win arguments. Really, it just makes people ignore you very quickly. Um, that or the comment moderators get to them and mute them before I even see them or YouTube does it automatically. Saber Interactive has said since this game launched that they are open to balancing changes. They even have their own page for that, by the way, for suggestions including balancing. And they have already made some. And I was waiting to hear more about balancing from their live stream that recently aired before saying anything else, as I actually wanted to give them the benefit of the doubt and wait it out. But their recent live stream didn't really mention much on balancing at all. It was mainly just a creator-focused live stream kind of puff piecing the game a little bit. Uh, and it's a game that I love, so I'm fine with that, but I did want to revisit this topic because of that. I didn't want to go back to it just because I got destroyed and couldn't handle it, and I only made $20 off that video, okay? So uh, nobody cares when I talk about The Evil Dead, genuinely. It's just because I like it, and I'm one of the lunatic fans who is willing to uh, even do crazy things like buy replicas of the Kandarian Dagger and things. I just love this franchise. That's why it's important to me. I apologize for the very long intro. It's just that it's very hard to actually get your points across and clarify your intention without actually doing so. 
Uh, one point that I did see people bring up was that this game is not actually meant for casuals. It's not meant for casual players. And if new players don't like that, they shouldn't play it. This is an actual point that I saw people bring up. And my response to that is that if this game isn't accessible to newer people to join in and do something, then the game will die. When you have only what we call sweaty players, and I'm not trying to be a dick by this, this is just what the community calls them, just the online community, uh, which is essentially people where it's their main game, okay? That's all they're playing right now. Uh, they're not playing anything else, or maybe they have eight plus hours a day to devote to the game. That's fine. Maybe you're uh, financially independent. Uh, maybe you're younger. I don't know what your situation is. Good for you. I'm glad you're enjoying the game. Um, but, you know, if that's the only demographic that you're targeting with a video game, the game dies. Uh, it's happened time and time again, and on top of that, this isn't even the demographic that actually Saber was targeting with their marketing. If you go back and look through it, they were targeting Evil Dead fans. They were also targeting fans of horror and asymmetrical horror and stuff like that, but their entire marketing scheme was aimed a lot at fans of this franchise as a celebration of the franchise. Almost like a throwing a bone to them, like, hey, we know you, uh, we know you never got that Army of Darkness sequel you wanted. Uh, we know that Ash vs. Evil Dead kind of got canned. Bruce was hoping for five seasons. You got three. Listen, we love, we love, love, love Evil Dead. We're making a fan love letter type project to it that's going to be a very fun game. That was kind of the whole point of it. This does not mean that it's not directed at asymmetrical fans or anyone else. It absolutely is. But I think for people to act like that's the only crowd it's aimed at, the hardcore asymmetrical horror crowd... Uh, because someone is in that demographic, so they want to kind of uh, blow up the importance of that. I do think that that's a bit misguided at best, and I think it's willfully being disingenuous at worst, and will result in the accelerated death of a game like this if you're not making it accessible. That's why I always was trying, and this is where I think I failed, to get across the point that I want the ceiling lowered for new players. And what I mean by that is some of the crazy, absolutely ridiculous things that level 25 survivors or level 45, uh, you know, uh, demons can do, maybe those things are scaled back a little bit. That's kind of what I was talking about in terms of giving people a fighting chance, not making their level ups not matter, nor is it I expect someone to come in and be the new god of this game. You know, I, I don't expect those things at all, and I think a lot of straw mans were brought up there kind of reading into what I was saying. However, I also think I did a poor job of explaining that, which again, that's why we're here. I also do believe that there's a real arrogance too sometimes with the gaming community, certain people in it, not the community itself, but certain people in it with the whole get good mentality. Get good is hilarious as a meme. It actually is. You know, somebody falling off of a cliff and being a dumbass in uh, Elden Ring, we're currently playing through it on the Let's Play channel, also Evil Dead the game, and you tell them get good and you're not really being serious, you're just playing with them, that's funny. That's actually funny. Uh, but I do think there's a lot of people who take that very seriously and it's actually damaged the general perception of games like Evil Dead and gamers and sort of just people who play video games. I think whenever someone has a critique of a game or thinks something might be slightly unbalanced, there's a select group of people who have placed a lot of their personal value and love into a game or property, and they are not open to even listening because a perceived attack on that is an attack on them. I don't think that actually helps these games or products, movies, anything, nor does it get new people interested in gaming or the game that we're discussing. What this really does is just annoy people and drive them away from a given game, topic, or community, which then accelerates the death of said game or property, because whether you like it or not, games need to be accessible to newer players. They need to be able to have a learning curve that's not just centered around, I can't wait to hit level 25 to unlock the broken ability to put my flute player 12 miles away so that I have insanely powerful deadites and no one can hear it or do anything. Um, you don't just want the, the learning curve built around that, like a specific ability or a couple of abilities that are very, very powerful. You want them built around learning the game and getting better. Now, this doesn't mean that you just need to ignore seasoned players or add an easy mode to everything. I'm actually one of the people who advocates that's stupid. Uh, you know, I don't want to see that in things like Dark Souls or Bloodborne or Demon Souls or Elden Ring, any of those games, an easy mode. But... 
I do believe that you need to lower the barrier for entry on certain things to allow new players to have an impact so that they're willing to keep coming back. If your solution to that is just play as Survivor because then you probably won't get reamed and you can put your points into Demon, yes, that's a solution that is fair for a lot of people to do, but you know what will happen is a lot of people will just never play Demon again. And if you don't like that, that's fine. And even if you want to say, well, I'm right, they should, that's fine. They still won't. Without demon players, game dies. If the only people you have on demon players are basically a god, uh, the game will also die because no one will want to deal with it. You kind of need to have both, and it's the same with survivors. And if you don't want to lower that ceiling a little bit to allow new players to have more of an impact, then you should be content with your game being a disposable experience that will be dead within a couple of years instead of living on to have a community that's willing to go back and play it for the foreseeable future. And I think it's worth mentioning that the example, um, just because like Ass Kicker 32 the hardcore Twitch streamer, I made him up. Uh, maybe I should say her. You know, I'm going to get some internet points. Look, just because that person can do it at level one or just because that person can uh, run a challenge run on Arkham City and beat the game in 30 seconds... That doesn't mean everybody's going to be able to do that, nor does it mean most people will be able to do that. That's a statistical anomaly, and it's impressive and cool, but to sort of use the exception to the rule to prove your point doesn't really do anything. You know, if I was the greatest Smash Bros. player in the entire world as playing as Toon Link, and I tell you, well, if I can do it, well, okay, well, I've already lost you. Because I'm a competitive level, like the greatest Smash Bros. player in the world of Toon Link. It doesn't matter that I'm good at the game. That's cool. It's not an insult. It's just you can't use me, the exception to the rule, to prove your point. I've seen a lot of people also say, well, Dead by Daylight is doing just fine. So there's no reason to criticize this. Really? I mean, this would kind of be like me starting up my own fighter based off of freaking Rocky. You know, or maybe, uh, I don't know the X-Men only, and I start a uh, a fighter. I'm talking the video game, not Fight Club. Okay, that's going to be successful for a bit. Here's the thing with Dead by Daylight. It is the Smash Bros of this type of game. Look at how much access to different IP that they have. They have things like Silent Hill. They got it. They yanked it away from pachinko machines for 10 minutes in order to put it in a game. They got Ghostface with Scream. They've got Michael Myers with Halloween. They've got Freddy Krueger with Nightmare on Elm Street. And more, by the way. And more support coming. The game is not dead. The reason Dead by Daylight is doing so well is because it had a decent core experience, which I'm not even the biggest fan of, by the way. I've, I've streamed it before. I sucked horribly at Dead by Daylight. I'm not actually that much better now. But I can see why Dead by Daylight is so successful because it's constantly bringing in horror fans like, hey, listen, you like Freddy? He's here now. Hey, you Ghostface? Here he is. Hey, Silent Hill? You don't uh, live near a pachinko machine? Well, come on in. They're always doing this. They are the Smash Bros of this type of game. So to use them as sort of a example to try and say this game doesn't need to improve, I think that's silly. I think if anything, that means this game needs to improve more. And I say that from loving this game, because as of this moment, this game is only Evil Dead. It only has that one IP to support it, plus good gameplay. So you need to really batten down the hatches and sort of fix that ship up and keep it going in tip-top shape. Another point I saw was that I only care about the balancing of the demon and nothing else. And here's the thing. This is another place where I think criticism of my video was very, very valid. This is why after this section, I'm going to mention a few things that I think would actually help make Survivor play more fun, because I think the demon has some things about it that if you know what you're doing uh, and you know those powers are ridiculous, especially early match. But I fully admit that in my personal haste to not make that video crack 30 minutes, because I actually wanted people to watch it, I sped through some of my points on Survivors in a way that sent that message to people, that that's all I cared about. Again, it didn't to a lot of people. Most people agreed with me, or at least saw some of my points, but it's a worthy critique of what I actually said because I didn't do a good enough job there. I had actually gone back in and added in a three minute section trying to be more supportive of survivors near the beginning already, believe it or not, uh, because I felt like eh, this might be too demony. Uh, but it wasn't enough to fully get that discussion across as it made it seem like I just viewed uh, the survivor as an afterthought, which I really, really don't. I also do think that the argument that Survivor has abilities that are overpowered as well, so it's fine, or it balances itself out, or works itself itself out, um, or not acknowledging that means that you don't play the Survivor 
at all, which I saw some people saying like that it means I don't play Survivor. I actually kind of disagree with this. I think the goal should be to balance both sides of the equation as well as possible. Now, nothing's ever going to be perfect. We're human beings. We will never create a perfect product. But my main point wasn't specifically meant to be on the side of the demon, although I do concede again, that's how I worded it. That's my fault. But I did also try and point out that the demon itself, especially something like high-level puppeteer, can become extremely obnoxious to deal with. Like 45 puppeteer bringing out the boss, uh, yeah, that's really annoying, whether you say he's the worst boss in the game or not, which I've seen people say. Moves like Telekinetic Surge can actually wipe an entire team if they're low on health, uh, and basically reward a demon just for kind of sitting around and pressing square or X. That's kind of obnoxious and not really the best. Uh, that can pretty much, I've before one-shotted three people. Now, to be fair, they weren't at max health, but I've done it with a fully upgraded boss, just destroyed three out of four people, and then immediately pick off the last one in the final objective. That sucks. That's frustrating. It doesn't mean that it shouldn't do anything, but I think a move like that, like Telekinetic Surge, can be very annoying to people and do a lot more than it maybe was intended to do originally. I did also neglect to mention some of the pro-survivor balances other than that that I'd like to see, though, as well, and some of the comments pointed that out, which I thought was, you know, a fair point. A good example of this is that I'd like to see basic possession early match not be as powerful. I know this is a big argument on Reddit, people saying, oh, no, it should be, no, it shouldn't be, fine, whatever. Uh, but I think it makes sense for possession to be powerful on a puppeteer. Elagos's whole shtick is basically possession. It's infiltrating the minds of his enemies, but for both of the other classes that have such a high-powered possession capability, both on basic units and even on other players, it seems a bit much to me, especially early match, and it can make matches extremely lopsided in the favor of the demon, if they find a team within the first minute or two, which can also easily happen. That can happen just as easily as the survivors coming across uh, a map part in the first 30 seconds. Because of this, I do think that you can change both things. You can both split up the map pieces better so that survivors aren't finding them within the first 30 seconds of the match, but also either nerf the damage output of possessing basic units within the first X amount of minutes of the match, uh, or, you know, make it so you can't possess as many units so quickly. I don't think that those need to be mutually exclusive, where you fix something on one side of the gameplay and then wash your hands and say, oh, well, fuck them, they're good. Uh, you can do both. Another example of a pro survivor change I'd like to see is for Necromancer's stupid flutist to not have nearly the same range it currently has, especially with the skill that would allow it to have an even greater range right now, when the flutist makes battling the skeleton deadites a complete pain. And that's fine. The problem is, by extending the flutist's range, he's able to buff deadites that really help out the demon uh, from an insane distance away. The whole balance of the flute player was supposed to be that you can hear the flute player in the distance as a survivor, seek him out and get rid of him to get rid of that support. Then they have to wait to call it back in. But you'd have to trade off splitting off from the group to do so or drag the whole group with you away from an objective or looting in order to avoid the constant onslaught of buffed skeletons beating you down like it's a UFC cage match where the entire audience has decided to pour in and support the other fighter. I also just don't think these things need to be mutually exclusive. Like I said, you can disagree with some of the decisions that are good for survivors, I do, or some of them that are good for demon, I do. Uh, like I said about things like map placements being too easy, or some objectives spawning too close together with weird RNG, uh, or even, like I just said, with the demon being able to possess early match and just destroy everyone, or even abilities from a character like Amanda, who's actually not concerned that great by most of the community, but her infinite bullets make it so she can just melt a boss like Evil Ash, soloing them in seconds, even at level one. Uh, but at the same time, you can also critique the other side. I genuinely think you can say that there would be some improvements if this was changed on this side and this was changed on this side. And I think I could have done a lot better of a job explaining that stance instead of focusing so much on one. And that's why I say that that's a bit on me. Uh, what I care about with this game is that its life lasts as long as possible. I want to see more content. I want to see more community suggestions for content and having those things brought in and acknowledged. I want to see balancing acknowledged by, you know, the developers 
from the community where applicable and not changed where it's not applicable. I don't think I'm a god on this subject, nor am I, you know, uh, butt kicker 34269 on Twitch who streams for 12 hours a day and only plays this. Good for them. I'm glad they're enjoying it. That's not me. Uh, but I really don't think that you should be punished in a way or insulted for disagreeing with someone else's opinion on this game, nor should you really feel like you have to quit your job and play only this game to have an opinion on it. I think if that's kind of the general attitude floating around around this game, it will really hurt it more than help it, and I think it'll make a lot of people just kind of leave and not be willing to play it. And if that's what you want, I guess that's fine, but if anything, I think that just gives people license to ignore opinions, even if they are valid, and it also just drives people away from the game and makes them not want to play, which will kill the game in the long run. I didn't make this video just to kind of shed a light onto people's negative comments of my last video. That's why I'm not even showing them. I, I just don't think that's really worth the time. But I thought that it was important to address some valid criticisms and concerns I saw in my last video because I think that too many people, including me, are too eager to sort of ignore valid critiques or criticism or points that others bring up that might not line up with our own. I think this is why I wanted to kind of go back and take a look at some of those and concede on some points while also defending my own points that I thought were valid as well with this game. And just telling you at the end again, if you didn't see my review, because more people for some reason watched my balancing review than my actual full review, uh, I love this game. I want it to be around for a long, long time. I plan to make more content on it, including top fives of things I want to see, things I love from it, and things like that. So if you like this video, I'm going to be doing that here on this main channel. If you're one of the 12% that actually bothered to make it to the end of this video and hear me out, well, you're cool. I can't believe you took the time. I appreciate you. And I do have a Let's Play channel where I'm playing through this game as well. I've just beaten, I believe, well, maybe not quite yet going up, but I'm beating the Pablo mission, starting the final mission uh, with Lord Arthur. I technically beat all these a couple weeks ago, but I have a lot of stuff to upload over there. So I hope to see you there as well, checking that out. I appreciate it if you leave a like and if you subscribe. And hey, even if you disagree, that's cool. Maybe just, you know, voice it, I don't know, intelligently. Have a fantastic day. As always, everyone, stay shway.